good everybody? Jossie here and in today's video I'm gonna be answering 10 tech career questions in under 10 minutes. I asked you all to ask me questions on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. So I picked 10 questions that I think will be very helpful to the broader audience regarding not only my career as a software engineer, but just more general questions for those of you all who are aspiring to enter into the tech industry. If you could give this video a thumbs up, it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. I would greatly appreciate that. I wanna make sure that as many people as possible can watch this video. Also consider subscribing for more content like this and becoming a part of this amazing community. All right, we don't have much time, so I'm gonna jump right into these questions. The first question is from Tristan underscore 1772. Is that when you were born, Tristan? How much time should you invest a day to learn to code? That's actually a great question. I think too many times we spend way too much time trying to learn something and not thinking about how we can be more productive with a little bit amount of time. I personally would recommend shooting for like seven to 10 hours a day, which basically means you're shooting for about an hour to like an hour and a half spending time working on programming. I think that's a really good amount of time. That way you don't burn yourself out too much. And those are realistic goals and it's pretty easy to achieve an hour of time to spend learning how to program. That way you don't get frustrated with spending all these hours and feeling like you haven't learned anything. Question is from uncovered.gem. He asks, how did you get your first software job? I got my first software job as an intern. Basically what happened was I went to this like networking event at a bar on campus at the university I went to and I basically was the only freshman there and they were impressed that I took the initiative of going to that networking event and I had a little bit of programming experience because I was taking a Java course. Also, I did this Cornell summer engineering program for a week where I did some programming and I talked about those experiences and ultimately that led to an internship offer because I took the initiative. A lot of times you're gonna notice that taking the initiative is what separates from you and your peers, not necessarily how much you know. The next question is from Justin Lopez. How do you negotiate pay in the development industry? Have had some solid experience negotiating salary. One of my recommendations is to, if you can, try to have multiple jobs lined up. That way you can get a more competitive offer from the company that wants you the most. From my experience, I was able to negotiate because I had basically two job offers. So it really came down to who wanted me the most. Also, it's a combination of experience, competitiveness, and the specific programming language you're learning. One resource to check out is levels.fyi. They are not sponsoring this video, but I use that resource to negotiate my current salary along with negotiating the other salary for the other job that I was interested in pursuing. This question is from Anthony Nunes TV. What's your opinion on coding boot camps? My wife just completed a coding boot camp, so I was able to see how difficult they actually are. And my opinion is that they definitely get you very prepared for the workforce. One thing that I will keep in mind though is make sure that the coding boot camp offers the type of skill sets you're looking to gain because you might find yourself learning a programming language that isn't something you're interested in and it can make you think that you don't really like coding when in fact it was really the stack you were programming in or the language that you were learning. Also, if you're someone who needs more discipline and more organization, a coding bootcamp may not be the best decision for you because it, you do a lot on your own and sometimes your instructors don't really help you at all. The next question is from jill.codes. What language slash stacks should I learn as a final year student to help get a software job? If you're a computer science student, you're gonna learn a lot of like backend programming languages and not necessarily like full stack or front end or mobile. So my recommendation is to just learn basic web development skill sets like CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Because if you already have like a technical background, like a CS degree, software engineering degree, management information systems, it's great to pair web development with that credibility of having a degree. 
that will make it easier for you to land a job because you'll have that piece of paper that says, hey, I know how to learn. And then if you have actual industry skill sets, that makes companies feel comfortable in hiring you knowing that you can come in and contribute right away. I've been talking so much, I definitely need a quick tea break. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to pronounce this name. It says Sebas Vasco underscore MKE. How do you balance social life and coding? That's a good question because I think a lot of people when they're learning how to code, they just code all day, every day until they feel comfortable enough to apply to job. Don't get me wrong, you wanna put those 10,000 hours in even though you do that over like the course of 10 years, not one year, that's not healthy. My recommendation is to give yourself boundaries. Say, hey, I'm gonna program from maybe 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. That way, from 8.30 p.m. until when you go to sleep, you can spend that time socializing, whether it's spending time with your family, your partner, or hanging out with friends, maybe playing video games, and then giving yourself a boundary on the weekends. like same thing give yourself a time frame during the weekend that way you can have a social life otherwise you're burning yourself out before you even start your career the next question is from underscore patrick Payne. can you talk about the pros and cons of working remote and working with a team in office as someone who's an extrovert i get a lot of energy from being around people getting up and going somewhere however as an entrepreneur i love being able to just work from home that way it makes it easier for me to create content spend time with my wife hours sometimes commuting and you really don't find yourself at home as much as you like so that's one of the cons of being in office is that you're just spending too much time commuting and not being around your family and friends one of the pros to working in office is being around people and those hallway conversations one other pro about working remotely is the fact that you literally can work wherever you want and kind of just be a digital nomad which i think is most gen z slash millennials goal in life to do at some point in time so the next question is from kaya jones what is the difference between information technology management degree and a cs degree um, would you get the same job slash intern opportunities? Some people don't like when I say this, but information technology is a much more watered down version of computer science. I have to be honest because if you're someone trying to decide which one you wanna pursue, one is more difficult, way more difficult than the other, and that is computer science. Information technology degrees are usually in like business colleges or communications colleges whereas computer science program is usually in like an engineering or math and science department which means your basic requirements and gen eds are significantly more difficult the next question is from dot dev world does the software that you use vary based on the company yes it does for one you can be programming in a different stack maybe you were a full stack developer and you're programming with like c sharp angular and then maybe you got a new role as a mobile developer. You're not gonna be programming in the same language. You're gonna be using something like maybe React Native, or you'll be using Swift or Android Studio, using Kotlin or Java. So it definitely varies, not only based on the company, but really it's based on the project. The last question is from Stay Motivate Dad. What keeps you motivated when you run into a problem you cannot solve? What motivates me is all the times that I failed but didn't give up and ended up solving that problem. It can be very easy to forget how far you've come to where you are now, but sometimes you just need to sit back and be like, dang, I've been here before like a hundred times. Why am I not acting like I've never ran into a problem that I don't know how to find or don't know how to figure out and then you get unmotivated when you should really think about all the problems you have solved to get to where you are now. Those are things that I think of. And when I keep that mindset, somehow I end up figuring out that problem. And remember, you're working on a team, so it's really not your job to solve everything on your own. Thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it at all. Also, comment down below more questions. I'd love to make more content like this, even if it's not a dedicated video to answering questions, but a video where I integrate questions into the content. As always, have a wonderful, blessed rest of your week and I'll see you all soon. Peace.